Hello everybody! Hi guys! Indeed, Dane here, and welcome to my latest weekly reading vlog. I'm currently reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It is ten past eleven on Sunday the 29th of October. I'm filming this immediately after my last update, so I don't have anything new to tell you. But I will update you later on this week with some reading, hopefully. We will see, but hopefully. Dane reads... Hello everybody, it's your boy Dane here. It is currently quarter past 11 on the evening of Monday the 30th of October. Um, my sleep is screwed so I was kind of asleep all day and while well, I worked since about 5am last night, Shay came over because she wasn't feeling great and she just wanted some company. Um, we watched some Waterloo Road so that was nice but yes, we then slept in. Um, I don't really remember her leaving, I know she got an Uber, I vaguely remember her leaving at like 2pm ish but then I fell back asleep. Um, I went to the gym earlier and did my uh, exercise bike so that was good. I also, while I was there, I finished reading um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid which was a strong 4 out of 5, maybe a weak 4.5 out of 5, I haven't decided yet. Um, and so I'm now reading Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk and I'm literally like 10 pages in but it's it's grabbed me so far. It has an interesting little introduction with some great little lines. Um, so most of these are going to have reviews coming as well. In the meantime, I'm cracking on with um, the usual productivity, watching some YouTube, getting the house done, getting the house cleaned and um, yeah, I don't really know what's next. Just more work, just constant unforgiving work as much as possible because I need the money. Mm. All right. Hello, everybody. It is me, ya boy. Uh, it is currently 20 past midnight. No, sorry, 20 to 1 in the morning of Friday, the 3rd of November. Um, I did okay yesterday. Uh, just was productive all day until the cleaner came, then slept for like 11, 12 hours, hence me still being awake now. Today's been a productive day, too. So, I had a guy come over to buy an old guitar that I was getting rid of. Um, we took Biggie to the vets, he's over there, um, he did not like it at all, he, uh, he, he hyperventilates when he's scared, so he was in the carry case hyperventilating to and from the vets, which was quite rough, quite difficult to, you know, to see, to be honest. Um, but yes, we got the first of his injections, he has to go back in three weeks, and then Shay is going next week. Uh, just to make sure they're all immunised and been checked up and that, um, they said that he's fine, he's just a bit fat. Uh, so we've got to put you on a diet, Biggie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was kind of stressful. What else happened? I had a call which went ahead okay once my internet stopped playing up. Uh, another one which I've rescheduled because of my internet uh, playing up. Um, and then I thought Glastonbury tickets were going to go on sale today, but they've moved the date back by two weeks. So um, otherwise, I was going to try and get those. I also went to the gym earlier, and while I was there, I read Shepherd's Delight by Charles Heathcote, which is his debut collection of poetry. Strong four out of five. Really did enjoy this. This is my kind of poetry. Um, poetry with a soul, you know. Is it honest as well? It kind of investigates what it was like for him to grow up on um, a farm. And, um, you know, he's vegetarian as well, so there were some kind of clashes with, you know, his his father and all that, that kind of stuff. So it's very kind of personal poetry, and it was non-rhyming, so that was good as well. And uh, then after that, I read a chunk more of Invisible Monsters. I'm now like 20, 30 pages from the end. So I did that while on the exercise bike. Came back, and then I've been doing, not decorating but like refreshing so you can kind of see the door I repainted the door and I've repainted all the walls and um, skirting boards in the in the bedroom as well I still want to do the walls in here because you get things like you can kind of see over there where my incense station is like the wall isn't is off colored because I tried to fix it and I used the wrong color you know and the the cream has gone like an off-white color just from being up on in two years so um so yeah, I'm just kind of refreshing that stuff, so um, that's my my next move is to do in here. But it only took me about an hour or so to do the bedroom, so that was pretty good. Um, I'm quite hungry as well, so I might make some food in a bit. Other than that, I am filming, editing, cracking on, and that's where that's where we're at. Hello, yo, it's me. It is, um, is it Monday? No, it's just gone to turn into Tuesday, the 14th of November. Um, been super busy. I've been a little injured, so I didn't do park run this weekend. Um, I have, have still been going to the gym and doing the exercise bike. Um, that means that I have done a lot of reading. I've actually done so much reading that 
I cannot be bothered to wrap this stuff up, all of these books up twice, to film it now on my vlog and then do it again for the wrap up. So at the end of this bit here, I'm just going to splice in the footage from my wrap up. <laughs> I think that's going to be a lot easier. Um, so you'll get a little sneak peek of that. My internet is absolutely garbage. Um, I'm struggling to get online, which is super annoying because I'm trying to work and it's hard for me to work when I can't get online. Um, but yes, I have, as I said, I think I've got six or seven books to update you from because I've been doing the gym every day and going on the exercise bike. I just haven't been um, keeping up with my filming very well. Uh, we had a boot camp this weekend for one of my clients, which is basically like an online event where um, we we teach people the art of fiction writing, basically. I had some marketing videos as well. Um, and so that, as I say, that happened this weekend and I was kept pretty busy with that i think i was i worked like 1 a.m till 3 a.m on saturday and then um i think 9 p.m till midnight on sunday so yeah it was it was it was hard work but it was fun to take part in sorry i'm just trying to get my fucking internet working while i'm talking to you um that has been causing big problems uh to the point at which i don't really know what to do about it i've ordered a new wireless card in case, um, I don't know, because basically because my Mac seems to be doing a little bit better than my PC. Uh, my phone seems to be doing a bit better uh, than, my, than my laptop. So basically my Apple devices are working okay, my, my Windows ones are not. Um, so I've tried getting a new wireless card because the one i got at the moment is pretty shit. So we've got a new wireless card coming and hopefully that's going to make a big difference and actually allow me to access the internet. We will see what's going on here. I'm currently watching some old videos from Floating Our Boat on YouTube. They are a great uh, narrowboating channel. I got, I got turned on to the narrowboating community because of Charlie, Charles Heathcote. Uh, he introduced me to Foxes Afloat who no longer actually own a narrowboat. They now uh, have like a, a highland retreat in the Scottish Highlands. Um, but Floating Our Boat, Rich and Fran, and also Cruising the Cut, those are two of my favourite other narrow boating channels that I discovered. Biggie's up there. Um, so basically it's just people filming vlogs about their lives on um, on narrow boats, on like houseboats or canal boats or whatever. Uh, I shouldn't actually say narrow boat because I think Rich and Fran, I think theirs is a wide beam, which is a bigger boat. But anyway, all of that aside, um, I have been, as I said, I've been being productive. I've been having some nice food and stuff. Doing lots of housework, I'm just ticking off the last few bits of housework. Um, because I worked so much extra over this weekend, I'm actually due um, a little bit of like personal time. So hopefully later on tonight, I will be um, getting into bed and watching uh, watching Netflix and being productive. So we will see. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not. Um, do I have any other updates for you? I've spent all of my money because I've been doing my Christmas shopping. So I've now done all of my Christmas shopping, but I've spent way too much money, like six, seven hundred quid. So, yeah, I'm very poor now. Um, Biggie and Shay are still doing all right. Shay's still very nervous, but um, she's getting there. Do I have any vets? I don't think this week there are no vets. So I have my cleaner coming on Wednesday. Glastonbury tickets go on sale on Thursday. So I'm going to try and get some of those. And then on Friday, I have the dentist. And the week after, right, I have Biggie at the vet, and the week after that, we have Shay at the vet just to get their their second um, jabs. When Shay was at the vet, they actually needed three vets to hold her down, um, and they've given me some tranquilizers for her to, to to dope her up basically before I take her in next time. Um, because it's not that she's like aggressive; she's just really, really scared, so she kind of fights to defend herself. Um, and it's just you know, it's tough to see. Once they actually got her settled in, they kind of. She ended up in a sink, she was hiding in the sink and then got some, they had some blankets over her and that kind of held her in place which allowed them to give her jabs and stuff. Um, so yes, and Biggie just hated going to the vets. Hey Biggie, yeah, because he hates going outside the house, he has panic attacks, it's really rough to watch. Um, I think part of that is actually why I haven't been doing too many like, vlog updates as well, just because it's been stressful with the cats. Um, but yes, anyway. Uh, I don't have any other major life newsy things to update you on, I don't think, so we'll, we'll cut now to me filming my wrap-up. Because I make it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books uh, to wrap up. And then I'm just about, I'm like literally on the last two pages of my current one. And then I think next up I'm going to read This Much Is True by Miriam Margulies. Mar Mar I always thought it was Miriam Margulies, to be honest. Um, but I've heard good things about that, so yes. 
All right. All right, you folks. Well, I have a lot of books to uh, talk to you about. I'm also using this in my reading vlog. Um, if you're watching my reading vlog, you know why. Um, basically, because there's a lot of books to talk about. We're going to start with, oh, most of these are going to have reviews as well. So uh, links below, I guess, if I remember to, to set them. Well, I probably won't because the they probably won't be uh they probably won't be uploaded by then anyway the midnight library by matt Haig. so um i've read quite a few matt Haig books at this point um i really enjoy his writing style his ideas the idea behind the midnight library basically there's a main character in it who isn't too happy with her life and she's wondering what would have happened if things had turned out differently as we all do i think um well, it's not even that. Basically, she's just incredibly depressed, so she quote-unquote unalives herself because um, we can't say the real word on YouTube, apparently. And, um, yeah, instead of dying, she sort of ends up in the in-between in this kind of um, limbo, which is takes the form of this midnight library. Um, and she can look at her book of regrets, to look at all the things that she's regretted in her life, and she can make different decisions and see how things turned out. Um, I do think the ending of it was fairly predictable, but overall the writing was beautiful. Um, it's a very clever book, you know. I gave it a, a strong 4 out of 5, would definitely recommend. Then I read, oh I don't actually have a physical copy of this, I read Oz A Planing in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson, which is the last of the Ruth Plumley Thompson uh, Wizard of Oz books. I gave this one like a 3 out of 5, it wasn't particularly good. It's um, actually, basically it came out the year that the Wizard of Oz movie came out and uh, you can tell it's more of like a commercial cash grab than a, a serious attempt at, you know, building the Oz legacy if such a thing even exists. Um, and uh, yeah, it was okay, but basically the point of it is that there's um, uh, uh, an aeroplane. The Wizard of Oz has created an aeroplane, and we um, we see what happens when he, he goes flying through the skies. Uh, then I read... Um, what did I read? Okay, then I read All the Discworlds of Stage by Terry Pratchett, adapted by Stephen Briggs, and this is play versions of Feet of Clay, which is my first ever Discworld novel that I read. The Rinse Cycle, which is mostly based on uh, The Light Fantastic, but with bits of The Colour of Magic and Sorcery in there as well. And then Unseen Academicals, which is based on Unseen Academicals. Three different Discworld plays. I've never read any of the Discworld plays before. I've never seen them uh, performed, so it was really nice for me to kind of re-familiarise myself with the Discworld. It was nice because I've read all of the Discworld books, but it kind of felt like experiencing them for the first time, um, which, you know, now that alas Terry Pratchett is no longer with us, I don't know, it, it just was very moving because of that. So I gave it a 4.5 out of 5, and I would love to see these performed live. Then I read Melted Into Air by Sandy Toxvig. So Sandy Toxvig is a TV presenter. Uh, she does some radio stuff as well. I guess she's worked in the theatre. Uh, I previously read um, Hitler's Canary, which was, I guess, like, you would call it, like, maybe a young adult book, maybe even a middle grade book, uh, aimed at younger readers anyway, um, based on what her parents did in Denmark during the uh, Second World War. This one is just very different. This one is kind of a contemporary, almost romance novel. Um, basically, a woman in her middle ages who works as a theatre producer, she's kind of just feeling a little bit down and out. Um, she was in a relationship that, that you know, went tits up um, for various reasons. And she just doesn't really know what she's doing with her life. So her cousin, I think it is. Uh, anyway, somebody she, she she's related to them, but she also works with them in the theatre production. Um, and it, they arrange for her to go off to Italy, where basically she has a dark incident in her past. Um, it's all to do with religion, and basically set in a very religious part of Italy, with um, kids pretending that they have had a vision of... Um, you know, like a saint or whatever, and the ensuing uh, havoc that that causes. Don't mind me, I'm just picking the stickers off the front of it while I talk to you guys. Um, so it was very interesting. It wasn't the normal kind of thing that I would read, um, and I don't think I even would have stuck with it if it hadn't been written by Sandy Toxvig, but it certainly was well written. Um, funnily enough, I was thinking that it's the kind of book that Charlie, Charles Heathcote should read, um, because A, I imagine that he likes Sandy Toxvig. There's something about Charlie that makes me think he probably likes her. Um, but B, because it's set in Italy, there's a lot of stuff about Italian culture, lots of bits of Italian language, and Charlie is studying Italian. Um, so I just th think it'd be quite nice from that point of view. Um, but yeah, I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. Um, some bits were better than others, but you know, it kept me reading. 
Then I read Life on Air by David Attenborough, and I do not have the book for this. Well, I do, but it's downstairs. But I actually listened to the audiobook of this, which was narrated by Attenborough himself. It's basically his memoirs of broadcasting, and that to me was particularly interesting because um, I've read some of his non-fiction stuff before, but it's all been like his Zoo Quest books or, you know, The Life of Plants, whatever it is. Because um, he has a lot of naturalist books that are, are based upon his, you know, his work that he do does as a, a presenter in sort of nature shows, biological, um, you know, biology shows, I guess you call them. Like natural animals and stuff. Um, so I've read a lot of his non-fiction and weirdly basically most of his books came about because he was sent to do a documentary for the BBC or whatever and while he was there he wrote a book. So it was really kind of interesting going through his uh, memoirs and seeing how like all these different projects came about and um, you know relating them back to I've not necessarily seen the the shows but I have read the books you know so that was really cool and it just kind of gave me a new insight into why Amber is such a national treasure uh, very well deserved the other thing I would say as well is it was interesting because this was in the early days of television you know when he got his first TV job he didn't, he didn't own a TV. He had seen some TV at his wife's parents' house, but he himself didn't own a TV. Everything was black and white. Um, they had no way of recording shows, so most shows happen live, but then they couldn't record them. So rather than, let's say they had a, you know, a teleplay or whatever, rather than you know record the one performance and air that twice, they would just do two different performance of it, uh, performances of it. So it's all kind of really interesting to learn that side of things. Overall, I gave it a strong four out of five, especially with the uh, audiobook because it was narrated by Amber himself. Okay, then we have uh, Come Again by Robert Webb, and weirdly, this is kind of like the Midnight Library. The plot of this is there's a woman called Kate. Um, she's kind of grieving because her husband of 25 or so years has passed away from like a, a brain tumor that neither of them knew that he had until it was too late. Um, she's kind of spiraling into despair. And then one night she sort of she's pretty much doing the same thing. She's trying to kill herself. She you know she's drinking herself into oblivion um, with the deliberate aim of ending her own life. And she wakes up in her past um, back at her first day of university, and she kind of gets to see what could have happened if things were different. And she learns that because she herself is different, you know, she's a um, you know middle-aged woman in an 18-year-old's body. The relationship doesn't quite develop the same way as it did before. As it did before, her um, husband was actually a bit of a knob when he was young, and sure, you know, she loved him, but it was only after years of building him into a better person, you know. And we start to think, well, maybe she ended up with the wrong person. There's also another kind of side story going alongside it, which relates to like deep fakes and AI, which is really interesting. And in, you know, given the society we live in today, um, and so yeah, it was overall it was a really interesting read. Uh, it's by Robert Webb, who is one half of Mitchell and Webb. He was in Peep Show uh, and that Mitchell and Webb look, which are two of my favourite comedies. And um, yeah, it was interesting to see there were bits of comedy, but there were also some serious bits to it. It's one of those books where. It asks you questions as a reader, but it doesn't do that at the expense of having a good plot at the same time, you know? Uh, and then I read, and I don't have it over here, i tell you what I can show you. I read um, Death's Domain by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Briggs, I think it was. Was it Stephen Briggs or did he do it with someone else? Can't remember. But basically, uh, it's one of the Discworld maps, so I've take, actually taken the map out of the book here because I'm going to frame it and put it on my wall. So this is Death's Domain. This is what um, Death's Domain looks like. And uh, yeah, it came with like a little book as well that sort of talks about all of the different aspects of Death's Domain. It's just one of Pratchett's Discworld map things. He did one for Ank Moorpork as well. Um, again, I'm, I'm slowly but surely ticking my way off through the last few Pratchett things that I haven't read. And this was one of them. Uh, probably like a 3.5 out of 5. And the same for Come Again. Maybe a 4 out of 5, but probably a 3.5 out of 5. And uh, that is me now up to date, so now I've got to film my reviews. Hello everybody, it is 11pm on Tuesday the 14th of November, so probably still the same day as I filmed my last update I think. I don't have much to tell you as well, um, my legs still, well my knee is still playing up a little bit so I uh, didn't go to the gym today, I almost went. Um, and then I ended up just taking Shay a care package and then by the time I'd walked to hers my knee was hurting too much for me to go to the gym so I didn't go. Um, I might go tomorrow though, we will see. Um, 
I'm hoping that it will all heal up nicely in time for the weekend so that I can do park run, which will be my fifth ever park run, but we will see. We'll see whether I manage it or not. In the meantime, I'm just being productive as usual, uh, cracking on with a few bits and bobs and uh, boobies. Um, cleaners coming tomorrow, Glastonbury tickets on sale the day after, dentist the day after that. I've also got a client who I'm supposed to be writing a 50,000 word book for. Um, they, they told me to wait uh, when I hit the 25% mark. They told me to wait until they gave me their feedback um, and then I've had an email yesterday being like, where's the next 50% of the book? And I'm like, I'm still waiting for the feedback from you guys. I haven't been working on it. So now I have to write like 40,000 words of this book to bring us back on schedule. I mean, essentially I've got another, yeah, 40,000 words of this book is meant to be done by the end of this month, which isn't gonna happen. And for the same client, for because they basically, you know, work with ghostwriting, uh, they sort of work with other clients and um, they kind of mix and match the writers with the clients so that I'm ghostwriting books for their clients. And um, yeah, I've got another book for them. So total, I have about 90,000 words I need to write for this client by Christmas, which is like six weeks, which just, it's not gonna happen. Um, so I'm gonna work as hard as I can to get as many words to them as possible. But also bear in mind, I have other clients I need to work on on top of this as well. And like 90,000 words, that's, well it's two books, I've got to write two books by the end of the year. It was just, mm. and obviously it would be nice to work on my own books, which eventually I hopefully will do. Also I've been watching a show on Netflix, it's a documentary about, um, there was a fire on a ghost train at a place called Luna Park in Australia, um, which is like a fun fair, um, which obviously, was not so fun after uh, after it burned down. I'm just trying to find out where the because I sent Shay a screenshot of it. Yeah, exposed the go uh, exposed the ghost train fire is what it's called. I would recommend watching that if you get a chance. But that's where I'm at. And um, yeah, hello everybody. It is um, four o'clock in the morning of um, Thursday, the 16th of November. As you can tell, my sleep's pretty screwed. This time yesterday, I was actually at the gym. I went to the gym twice yesterday because I didn't go the day before, so I went at like 4 a.m. and then 8 p.m., 9 p.m., something like that. I've also been doing lots of walking and jogging and things like that um, because Shay and I are doing this virtual Scooby-Doo challenge where we have to cover 50 miles, which is 80.5 kilometers. Um, and she's in the lead at the moment, or she was yesterday. So I put in a big spurt of effort yesterday to try and overtake her. And I think we probably ended up just about the same because she's been trying to keep her lead as well. The cleaner came around yesterday, so that was good. Um, next up is this evening at 6 p.m. Glastonbury tickets go on sale, so I need to be awake for that. And then dentist uh, Friday afternoon, which I'm not looking forward to. I hate going to the dentist. I am still reading um, This Much Is True by Miriam Margulies. I don't know how to say her name, to be honest. Um, but yes, been reading that at the gym, so you can see. Making a dent, review coming soon. After that, I might read The Thief by Ruth Rendell, because I picked this up from the local book exchange. And it's nice and short and sweet, you know? Um, what else? Yeah, because McLean has been around, I've been trying to do a bit of housework myself. I still have a few other bits and bobs left for me to do, um, but I'm slowly but surely getting there. I also have, obviously, filming to do, and, um, yeah, lots of work as well. I'm just going to keep working. I'll probably work till about 6am, and then I'll go to sleep, and then wake up in time for the ticket sale. So I haven't been seeing much sunlight recently. Mm. Hello, it's me. It is currently... Shit, I've just remembered I have to go to the dentist today. It is currently 10 till 3 in the morning of Friday the 17th of November. Um, yesterday was a bit of a non-event. I didn't go to the gym. I worked until about 5, 6 a.m. in the morning. Slept until about 6 p.m. because then the Glastonbury tickets went on sale. Tried to get the tickets, completely failed. You basically just sit there refreshing a page constantly until the tickets sell out. I was actually there a good 10 minutes extra because they don't update the page to tell you the tickets have sold out. They're still letting you queue for them. So I didn't find out until I checked like the Glastonbury social media and they're like, yeah, we've got no tickets left. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing still sitting here refreshing this page then? So anyway, I worked out if I'd have worked instead of trying to get those tickets, I would have made 25 quid. I would have rather had the 25 quid than just sat there doing fuck all. So I'm a bit annoyed about that. Tickets go on sale again on Sunday for general entry because I was looking at the coach tickets. So I guess I'll try again on Sunday, but that takes longer as well. That can take like an hour and a half of refreshing and you still don't get anywhere and you still don't get any tickets. So 
I don't know, maybe I'll invoice them afterwards and be like, you owe me 80 quid for all of this time I've just spent trying to get into your fucking ticket system. But I don't think they'd pay, so. <laughs> but yeah, I was so disappointed after that, because I was trying to get them. I've been a few times, like I used to go 10 years ago, I went three or four years, and then I stopped going because of the ticketing system, because it just seems, I hate wasting time. So, I'd rather they use the ballot, which they've been talking about, and they assign tickets on the ballot, and you just know before the tickets go on sale whether you can get them or not. Then you don't have to waste your time sitting in the queue, you know? And it would be fairer, because I was seeing people on Twitter who've tried 10 years in a row and haven't got any tickets. So, anyway. Um, but I wanted to get them because Shay's never been, so it was going to be a Christmas present to Shay, which obviously is looking doubtful now, we will see. Um, but yes, then I went back to sleep because I was feeling very depressed. And I woke up about half two, and I'm just settling in now. As I say, I have the dentist at 2.35. I'm glad they didn't do it at 2.30, because that's just a meme, isn't it? But yeah, dentist at 2.35 p.m. I'll probably try and go to the gym. I might even go to the gym before the dentist. And then come back here for a bit, and then head over to Shay's, because I'm supposed to be staying at Shay's this evening. Part That was another part of the reason why I slept, to be honest, because I want to be awake for her. Um... Oh, more specifically, I want to sleep when she sleeps, because the last few times I've been over, she's fallen asleep at 1am, and I've just been there till, like, well, I, normally I just stay up all night and then go to park run after not having slept all night. So hopefully this time, because I got up at 2.30 or whatever, I, I'll be able to stay up and we'll go to bed at, like, 11 or something, put a film on, then I can fall asleep first, and then she'll fall asleep soon afterwards. So that's the plan. I also need to hurry up and finish reading This Much Is True by Miriam Margulies, because um, I've already sold it on eBay. <laughs> So that's that's a thing because I'm only on page I don't know what page I'm on. I'm on page 186 of 434. So and that's after two sessions on the exercise bike. So I reckon three more will do it. So it shouldn't be too bad. I should still be ready to to post it on Monday. Okay, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna go and film. I've got two more reviews to film and a radio show, but I'm gonna work on those two reviews. Hello everybody, it is currently 5 past 11 on Sunday the 19th of November. Oh, I'm tired. Um, I've been a pretty productive weekend. I did parkrun yesterday, I can't remember whether I, I did a vlog update yesterday, but I did parkrun and enjoyed that and did a volunteer, so I wrote the first, or my first run report. Um, so that was good. Um, then what happened, I guess relatively early night, I was quite anxious, quite stressed, quite depressed. Um, and then today, I woke up at 8am to try and get Glastonbury tickets in the Glastonbury ticket sale, it just didn't get past, no joy. Basically you have to sit there refreshing the page constantly. It actually reminds me of back in the day on RuneScape, people used to sit there camping the Grand Exchange, which was basically like a big stock market and it would update its prices roughly once a day and when it did if you were the first person to get an offer in for a rare item you could quite often um end up like winning that item basically you'd be the they, they sold in like order in terms of when you had your bids i'm not going to keep talking about this you either know what i'm talking about or you don't and unless you were a merch like a merchant on runescape uh, approximately 10 years ago you probably have no idea what i'm talking about but yeah, it was like that, so I was just sitting there hitting the refresh button trying to get through, and I didn't even get past the queue to get into the queue. So, yeah, no Glastonbury next year. Um, but I'm not too worried because it is also like £400 a ticket now, so it's literally doubled in price since last time I went, um, although it's still just as hard to get tickets. Uh, yeah, then I've been doing some work. I went to meet Shay earlier. We went to the gym. We went for some coffee. Uh, we did a bit of shopping. We went to the new Christmas shop in town, and then we went to a couple of the supermarkets just to get some vegan bits and bobs. Then I came back. Um, I've just finished off doing some work that had the deadline of midnight. And as I say, it's like 10, 10 past 11 at night now, so I just about made it. So now I'm, I'm settling in to do uh, some filming and editing and stuff. I really need to tidy. Um, I've got loads to do to be honest, I've got loads of writing to do, I've got so much to do, I'm tired. But, I'm going to love you and leave you there, I'm still reading um, Miriam Margulies book, but I'm, I've almost finished now, and um, yeah, that's where we're at. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video, thanks a lot, bye bye.